Electrolysis is the breakdown of an ionic compound using electricity. The ionic compound could either be in molten state, given by the liquid state symbol, or it could also be in aqueous state, in which ions are able to move, meaning that the compound can conduct electricity, which then will enable the process of electrolysis to occur. The apparatus required are a cell, inert electrodes, as well as an electrolyte. The setup consists of a cell in which the positive terminal is connected to the positive electrode called the anode, and the negative terminal here is connected to the negative electrode which is called the cathode. We also have the electrolyte which is the ionic compound in either aqueous state or molten state. Reduction, which is the gain of electrons, occurs at the negative cathode that attracts positive cations. For example, positive hydrogen ions will gain two electrons to become hydrogen gas, or we could have metal ions such as lead 2 plus gaining two electrons to become lead atoms because opposite charges attract. And the opposite occurs at the anode. The positive anode is where loss of electrons or oxidation occurs. The positive anode will attract negative ions such as chloride ions that will become chlorine gas and two electrons. Or we could have hydroxide ions from water that forms water molecules as well as oxygen and four electrons. The first electrolyte that we'll look at is molten lead bromide, in which you can see here we have the positive terminal connected to the positive anode, and here we have the negative terminal connected to the negative cathode. At the cathode, which is negative, positive lead ions gain two electrons, making lead. So at the cathode, we get lead. At the anode, we have negative bromide ions that are attracted, to the positive charge, and bromide ions are oxidized into bromine gas as well as two electrons. So the two products that we obtain from electrolysis of lead bromide is lead as well as bromine gas. Next we'll look at the electrolysis of concentrated sodium chloride solution. In this electrolyte we have sodium ions, hydrogen ions, as well as chloride ions and hydroxide ions. At the positive anode, we have far more chloride ions that will be likely discharged into chlorine gas and two electrons. Then at the negative cathode, we will have ions of the less reactive element, in this case hydrogen ions gaining two electrons or reduced into hydrogen gas, leaving behind sodium as well as hydroxide ions that will form sodium hydroxide solution at the cathode. Next is the electrolysis of dilute sulfuric acid in which we have hydrogen ions, sulfate ions, as well as hydroxide ions. At the positive anode, hydroxide ions are being oxidized into water, as well as oxygen gas, and four electrons. At the negative cathode, hydrogen ions, which are the only positive ions in solution, will be reduced into hydrogen gas. Sulfate ions, remember, never get discharged because they're very stable as an ion. Next we'll look at the electrolysis of copper sulfate solution using inert electrodes. In copper sulfate we have copper 2 plus ions as well as sulfate ions but since this is aqueous we'll also have hydrogen ions as well as hydroxide ions. At the positive anode the hydroxide ions are being oxidized into 2H2O, O2, and 4E-, but the key product here is oxygen gas. At the negative cathode, the ion of the less reactive element, in this case copper 2+, will be reduced, making a layer of the brown metal copper In copper electroplating, however, we'll have the copper metal as the anode, and we are coating the cathode with the anode. 
Remember that the cathode has to be a conductor in order for electrolysis to occur. In this case, I'm trying to copper plate the key, therefore I need copper sulfate solution, which contains copper 2 plus ions, and I will also need the metal copper as my anode. At the copper anode, copper atoms are being oxidized to form copper 2 plus ions and 2 electrons. This copper ion will then migrate towards the negative cathode, where copper ions are then reduced into copper metal, forming the layer of copper on the object. In this case, the key will turn into a brownish pink color, which is copper metal. Finally, here's a summary of every single electrolyte that you'll have to know for the Cambridge Coordinated Sciences course. First, in electrolysis of lead bromide, which is molten, we'll have lead metal forming at the cathode from reduction of lead ions. And the positive, at the positive anode, we'll have bromide ions being oxidized into bromine gas. Next, then the electrolysis of sodium chloride solution, as well as sulfuric acid, which are both aqueous. Hydrogen ions will be reduced at the negative cathode, forming hydrogen gas. And at the anode for sodium chloride solution, which is concentrated, Chloride ions will be oxidized into chlorine gas, but for sulfuric acid, there are no halide ions. Therefore, hydroxide ions will be oxidized into water oxygen gas, as well as four electrons. In the electrolysis of copper sulfate solution, whether you use graphite electrodes or a copper anode, which is used in copper electroplating, the cathode will always have copper 2 plus ions being reduced into copper metal. Whereas the anode, for if we're using a graphite anode for copper sulfate solution, we will have, again, hydroxide ions being oxidized into water as well as oxygen and four electrons. But in electroplating, the copper anode itself will be oxidized into copper 2 plus ions and 2 electrons. Remember that in copper electroplating, the copper 2 plus ions will then migrate into the cathode to be reduced, forming the layer of metal on top of the object that we want to plate. In today's demonstration, we'll be looking at the electrolysis of sodium chloride solution as well as electroplating. So let's get the power started. First, you can see that the positive anode will have some... Actually, you can probably see that the negative cathode will have hydrogen gas being, displayed, being um, formed because hydrogen ions are being discharged. But at the positive anode, which is the red... Um, crocodile clip, you can see that there's not much going on here because there aren't too many chloride ions in solution, therefore we will not see much change, but due to some impurities, you can see that there's a slight brownish color forming, therefore uh, that's, the, that's it for the sodium chloride part. The next part of today's practical will be copper electroplating. So let's get the power on. And you can see here that we have the positive anode connected, the positive terminal connected to the copper metal, which is the anode, and the black um, cro crocodile clip is connected to the negative cathode, which is the object that I want to plate. In this case, it's the spoon. Therefore, I'm going to give this a little time in, so in the copper sulfate solution. And after a little bit, this tip of the spoon should be turning pinkish brown or the copper color that you can see here because the copper ions are being reduced forming copper metal the layer of brown um, coating on the spoon